Hello, and welcome back to our discussion of the simple AM radio receiver and some of the ancillary bits and pieces about radio circuits in general. And the piece of the simple radio circuit we're going to start with today is the antenna. Now, there's a lot of engineering that goes into it, making a good antenna, uh, but at its core, an antenna is just a piece of conductor. It can be something as simple as a <clears throat> length of wire. In fact, in, in these very simple, unpowered, note that there's no battery or anything in this circuit, uh, unpowered radio receivers, the antenna is often just a long piece of copper wire. I mean, long, like 30 feet long, if you want to get a reasonable amount of power coming onto the antenna because of, first thing we're going to talk about, the electromagnetic wave that comes from the radio transmitter tower uh, to your antenna at the receiver. So, to talk about electromagnetic waves just briefly, um, you've got in an electromagnetic wave an oscillating electric field and magnetic field, so electromagnetic, and they are in two planes relative to one another. That's um, shown here, well, reasonably well, by the red and blue lines. Grab purple for my pen. Okay, so. Uh, in this picture, you've got a magnetic field that's oscillating in this plane, so back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And uh, in this picture, the electric field is rotated 90 degrees relative to that. It always will be, in fact. And in this case, is vertical. Okay? Now, of course, you can have a, a vertical electric field, or rather, um, a horizontal electric field and a vertical magnetic field and uh, planes in which these things oscillate can rotate and all sorts of other interesting things, but they're always at 90 degrees relative to one another, okay? The other thing that you know about electromagnetic waves, which is a nice piece of information, though you know, it won't, won't bother us too much in our discussions, is that these two oscillations are in phase. So whenever the electric field is at a peak, then the magnetic field is also at a peak, okay? and vice versa, okay? This animation is meant to show the way that the wave propagates. So if you imagine that uh, you are the antenna, so on our radio receiver, so the antenna sitting right here, what I've now colored in to be a purple dot, what it would experience from the traveling carrier wave of the radio station that you're trying to pick, pick up is an oscillating magnetic and electric field. As the wave propagates past it, the electric field comes down. So we have a maximum electric field, then we have a minimum electric field, and then maximum the other direction, etc., 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 as the wave continues to propagate past our antenna. Okay. Uh, I think the animation does a pretty good job of showing you what the wave looks like as it propagates. So um, just keep this in mind, uh, the oscillations, they oscillate up and down in the vertical, so up and down in the vertical, side to side in the horizontal. Uh, the actual direction of motion of the wave is perpendicular to both of those things. This is why this electromagnetic waves are referred to as transverse waves. The thing that is oscillating, so electric and magnetic fields, uh, are perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the wave, right? Things like uh, sound waves, for instance, are longitudinal, so the, um, the air through which the, or whatever medium the sound wave is propagating through, oscillates back and forth on an axis that is parallel to the direction of the wave propagation. Okay, now for all electromagnetic waves, they propagate at the speed of light, well, in a vacuum. In other mediums, this is sort of bent a little bit, okay? But generally speaking, we can just view the electromagnetic wave, any electromagnetic wave that we're concerned with, to be propagating at exactly the same speed. This is not true of other waves. Other waves uh, all have velocities, but do not necessarily have the same velocity as another wave. Water waves, for instance, have wide ranges in how quickly they propagate whether you're talking about a tsunami, which goes very, very, very fast. I mean, not nowhere close to the speed of light, but still very, very fast. 
and then wind-driven waves traveling no faster than the wind that is driving them, for instance. Okay, so all electromagnetic waves, including radio waves, propagate at the speed of light. And that is represented by C in this equation. And the speed of an electromagnetic wave, which is this 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second, the fastest thing, sort of the speed limit of the universe, as far as we humans know, uh, is equal to the product of the frequency of the wave and the wavelength of the wave. Okay, it's a simple relationship. And the fact that uh, the speed of light is constant, so it's the same for all electromagnetic waves, or you're talking about radio waves, or visible light, or gamma rays, or x-rays, or microwaves, or any of these other electromagnetic waves, that being constant means that if you have a higher frequency electromagnetic wave, then the wavelength of that wave must be correspondingly lower, because the product of these two things always has to equal the speed of light. So, just to give you a quick little bit of perspective on the electromagnetic spectrum, because I mentioned all these other different names for different types of electromagnetic waves. They're all electromagnetic waves. They all consist of this electric field and magnetic field oscillating, but the wavelength and frequency of them changes dramatically depending on whether you're talking about what we're generally going to be concerning ourselves with, which is the radio portion of the spectrum, okay? where the wavelengths are on the order of 10 meters and can be considerably longer for things like AM, uh, so amplitude modulated radio signals, or for things like the stuff that they use in the Navy for communicating with under, underwater submarines, even longer wavelengths, and in any case, but big, sort of on the scale of as, as long as a whole human or even buildings um, is what we're talking about with radio waves. They even use longer wavelengths uh, as a side note in radio astronomy, which is why they need these huge series of uh, radio receiver dishes to pick them up so that you have radio waves that are many hundreds of meters or kilometers in size. Okay, now uh, there is of course other parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. All these waves you've probably heard the names of, but uh, it's worth noting uh, that the visible part of the spectrum that we observe right, with our eyes, can we detect visible electromagnetic waves with our eyes, lies in this tiny little range. This, by the way, this, this the width of this little bit here is not to scale, right? So this only ranges from 380 to 780 nanometers, so billionths of a meter. And that encompasses all the way from violet to red and back and forth, okay? So violet is low wavelength, so relatively high frequency, and red is relatively high uh, wavelength, so relatively low frequency. And that's true for the visible part of the spectrum. It's true for the whole spectrum where radio waves have very large wavelengths and I mean, 10 to the seventh Hertz feels like a large number until you look at the other end of the spectrum here at um, gamma rays, particularly energetic ones, right? Their frequency is like 10 to the 27th and their wavelengths are fractions of a billionth of a meter. So <clears throat> a lot of different properties here, but they all propagated speed of light. They all consist of electro oscillating electric fields and magnetic fields. They all have that same basic structure. It's just that the way that they interact with the world is very different. You generally don't want to be bathed in gamma rays all the time, and yet we don't think anything of being bathed in radio waves all the time, right? Uh, it's because radio waves are non-ionizing radiation. They don't... Um, can't damage our cells unless you can do it do it via heating but the kind of radio waves that you get from just like having a cell phone in your pocket or something like that are generally not a concern so that's a little side note on the electromagnetic spectrum we're gonna happily live over here in the radio part of the spectrum but it's it's nice to know sort of where that sits in relative uh, relatively speaking to all of the rest of the bits of the electromagnetic spectrum all these other types of electromagnetic waves so the other thing that I wanted to say about the electromagnetic waves that are going to be hitting our AM receivers antenna is that they are amplitude modulated. Now in GMDSS, at least if I understand correctly from talking to your professors and from talking to students like yourselves over the years, is uh, you go into quite a bit of detail on modulation. So I won't spend much time here. 
But the basic idea of the kind of signal that we're receiving with our radio receiver is that the information, the actual like audio signal, so here I'm just showing a single frequency of audio signal, so something like, uh, probably even more monotone than that, okay, uh, being mixed with the carrier frequency. So if you're thinking about a particular AM radio station, the number next to the AM radio station is the carrier frequency typically measured in kilohertz. So if you're talking about 1200 kilohertz or 1.2 megahertz, that's the carrier frequency of that radio station. And when those two things are mixed together on the transmitter side and then sent out from the radio tower as an electromagnetic wave, the electromagnetic wave's amplitude, essentially its, its intensity, okay, is modulated by the audio signal. So you can see on the red curve sort of sets the envelope, I guess what I'm drawing is a purple curve now, the envelope on the carrier frequency. Okay? And it will be the job of the antenna and the rest of the electronics in our AM receiver to translate this amplitude modulated signal, electromagnetic wave, into an electrical signal that is um, displayable or um, yeah, sort of displayable in the sound sense by the speaker attached to the end of our receiver. All right. So to give you an idea of the, the very basics of what's going on inside of an antenna is when this electromagnetic wave comes rocketing along and is propagating past the antenna. So if you look at this animation over here on the right, Okay. Uh, the little resistor in here is just representing all of the electronics in the receiver, just so we can keep this diagram nice and simple. And uh, we're only showing the electric field as it propagates past the antenna. And the animation runs a little bit quickly, but what you should be able to see is that as the electric field uh, is a peak and then a zero and then a trough and then a peak and then a zero and then a trough and then a peak and a zero, uh, the charges, remember that charges in a conductor are relatively free to move when they feel an electric force. Well, an electric field causes an electric force and it causes electrons to move back and forth within the conductor of the antenna here, okay? And depending on whether you're receiving uh, electric field in one direction or whether you're receiving electric field in the other direction, that tells you whether or not you're moving electrons one way or the other way. Now, if you think about electrons first going one way and then the other way and then the other way and then the other way. That sounds a whole bu bunch like what's physically happening in an AC circuit, right? When we hook up an AC generator to our circuit, I said um, that the current direction shifts uh, every half cycle of that AC power. Now, of course, the AC signal here is being uh, caused by this electromagnetic wave but once that oscillation of charge is set up and that oscillating current in the circuit in the, uh, the receiver is set up because of its attachment to the antenna, well, then we can just treat the antenna kind of like the AC source in all of our other AC circuits that we've talked about in this class, okay? So when we come back, we'll talk, uh, I think, just a little bit more about antennas. Okay, we'll do a little problem. Um, talk about a couple of types of antenna, though there are lots, and then we will move on to the next block of our circuit. But this video is getting a little long, so I don't want to uh, carry through to the rest of that. All right, so see you again soon.